Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to share with you this really nice data visualization, which is called a rain cloud plot. A rain cloud plot is actually a combination of several different plots. So what we have is a density curve, a box and whisker plot, and some dot plots forming a histogram and it gets its name because it looks a little bit like a rain cloud. So we have an example here on screen. This is from the famous Iris data set. And it's a really nice way for us to be able to compare the distribution of some sort of numeric variable across a set of categories. I'm going to work through the code that was used to produce this plot. And I'm also going to show you how you might deal with a really large data set. Because one of the limiting factors is the dots. If you have too big a data set, then these dots are going to get a little bit out of hand. Uh, one thing you could do is scale them down. So maybe a dot represents five or 10 points instead of just one. But the other way is to produce something similar to this, but just the density and the box plot. And I will show you that as well. All of the R code that we are using is shared on my website and the link will be in the video description. So in order to make this plot, we need to have our package from the tidyverse and ggdist and we are using a theme a little bit later on so we also have gg themes here as well this one's not absolutely necessary this is only if you are adding an extra theme to your plot if you don't have these installed you can go to packages hit install and type in their names to be able to install them once we have activated those we can jump into our code here and what I've done is broken it down into several sections. We are taking the iris data set and we're starting off with our ggplot statement and we have our factor which is the different species of flower and the variable that we are examining is petal length. And you'll notice here the x and the y are the opposite of what we've got in the plot. We're going to flip this round a little bit later on. We also have the species being repeated here as the fill so that we can get the fill on our density. The first part of the plot that we are going to produce is the density and that's actually a violin plot but using the stat underscore half i we can produce just one side of the violin plot which gives us our density. If we need to we can adjust the bandwidth for our density uh, to make it smoother or less smooth. And we can throw in these bits and pieces here just in terms of getting it to arrange nicely on our axes once we're adding in these extra other plots. The next step is to add our box plot. And so our box plot is pretty straightforward. So we have our box plot. I've said removing outliers, but actually for this one is... Uh, actually coloring the outliers. If we put an A in A instead, then what we can do is just have the outliers to not appear there and just have the whiskers go out instead. Uh, you can see a fairly recent uh, addition to our studio when we quote a color, it will show us that color as well, which is quite nice. And we can see in my example, I chose purple. We've got a couple of purple points there. Then we are going to add the dots. We can use dot size to scale how big they are. Depending on how many of them there are, we might adjust that. We also may adjust the bin width, which is just like with a histogram, the intervals that we are putting the accounts to get the dots into these different columns. So we can adjust that if we think that things are perhaps overly smooth or overly bumpy and we want to have a nice looking uh, distribution that represents the data in a reasonable way. For this particular plot I have then added uh, some themes so that's why we needed the themes package. So 538 named after the website uh, of Nate Silver. This is the theme to get these particular colors and styles on here. And then we've just added a title uh, and a label down here for our different categories. The last thing we've done is this chord flip and that has flipped our X and Y axes because it is much, much more readable when we're looking at the distribution uh, and kind of reading it 
horizontally rather than vertically. If you try making this and you leave off the this final bit, you will see pretty quickly what I mean. Trying to make sense of it when it's on its side, it's just a lot tougher. Okay, so let's suppose that we had a lot of data. Uh, the iris data set, fairly small. Uh, but if we had a lot of data, the dots component of this would not be particularly practical. As I mentioned earlier, you could try and reduce them down so each one represents uh, multiple observations, or we can just drop them all together. So if we come down and we run my second one here, this is another way we can approach it. And particularly also if we have more than th two or three categories. So here from the diamond data set where we have five categories and very, very skewed data as well, we are able to get a better impression of it by just leaving the dots out. We started with the diamonds data set, ggplot, exactly the same pattern as that previous one. We have the stat half i to get that density shape. We have our box plot. This time uh, we're excluding outliers by putting this NA in here. Uh, otherwise what will happen is it will put a point for each outlier and for these distributions there are a ton of them. It ends up looking pretty ridiculous. We've added some title and labels to the end and then we have flipped it around on its side to make it more readable. So this has been the rain cloud plot and then I guess the second one, not really a rain cloud plot anymore, but just an example of putting the box plot and density curve together on the same set of axes to just really try and understand the distribution of a numeric variable a little bit better than if we were just looking at some side-by-side -side box plots by themselves. So hopefully this has been helpful. As I mentioned earlier, all of the code linked up in the video description below. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe and I will be back soon with more stats, AI, machine learning, R and other random stuff.